David Wright. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, so on this channel, I really like to motivate people to make a difference in their life and to do something about their health issues because there's so much that can be done. And, <clears throat> you know, sometimes people just don't know what to do. So they don't do anything. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. But uh, you lost 75 pounds. Mm -hmm. And now you are a physique competitor. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So how old were you when you hit your peak of weight or your heaviest? Uh, so that'd be 2009. Um, so I was, gosh, 27. Wow. 29. And you know, even if you're older, even if you're in your 70s, you can do it. You can lose a lot of weight or just some weight if that's what you need to lose. So first of all, what made you decide or... Uh, what made what motivated you to make the choice to lose weight? What was it? So you know, a, a lot of things um, at that point uh, in my life. Uh, you know, I had gone from you know at the point where I was at about two hundred and sixty pounds. Um, you know, I could eat a whole a whole pie. You know, in one you know about an hour sitting there just eating. And um, at that point. I was a retail manager for, for a store and, you know, was on my feet and all that. So it wasn't a lack of getting out and movement. Um, it was more lack of you know, appetite and portion control and just general uh, eating <laughs> per se. But, um, you know, some of those circumstances changed. And so I started eating a lot less actually to kind of my own detriment, not in a healthy way. Um, it was more of a budgetary reason. And, you know, I have three kids of my own to support going from, you know, uh, two incomes to one income, that type of thing. So started losing weight, unfortunately, with malnourishment, um, not by choice per se. But then as I started kind of losing that weight and, and wanting to continue, you know, as circumstances got better in terms of, you know, the new nutrition and stuff like that. Um, I looked at it and said, you know what, I want to still lose weight and I don't ever want to go back to where I was fairly low energy. Didn't, you know, didn't know a whole lot about nutrition at that time. Like I do now, but I knew that I needed to do better for myself and for my kids. Cause they were really young then wanted to be able to you know, go play with them, you know, take them to the park, all these different things that you want to do as a parent. Um, but it was a lot harder for me. So when I lost probably about 40 or so of those pounds, um, started looking into the gym, uh, had a friend that said, Hey, you know, I'll go work out with you. Um, I'll show you what to do. Cause I had no idea, which is like most people, they don't know what to do when they come in. So they just may not come in at all. So that friend lasted about three uh, sessions. <laughs> um, and, and then kind of just flaked from there on. So it was up to me at that point to, to do my own research, to figure it out. Um, because at that point, I, I didn't want to go back to where I was. And then circumstances from there changed a little bit more where I switched careers from being on my feet all the time and moving around and doing different things to an office job where I knew for a fact that if I didn't, you know, kind of up my game to, to get myself more healthy and then stay that way, I was just going to go right back to, to where I had come from. And I didn't want to do that. So I want to get into more about how you actually did this, a little, little more details, and how you're doing it now, because you're a competitor now, mm -hmm. and you're, you're living your passion. You know, uh, David's a personal trainer, uh, a coach, a fitness coach, and uh, we're getting, uh, in one of our clubs, we're getting a body scanner, which we're really excited about, and David's going to be kind of heading that up. And uh, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a video on that when we get it. It should be here any day, any week. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's, this is a lifestyle for you, right? Absolutely. And you're helping people. Look, you guys, don't be afraid. The gym is a positive place. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you were maybe intimidated at first to walk in the first time, but what happened after you went into the gym the first time, the second time, how did you feel? So once I stepped foot in the gym, you know, that was a big step for me. Like it is for most people, you know, stepping foot in the gym, you know, I was aware of, you know, what most people 
oh, there's a treadmill, there's a, a bike over there, like you might know of these types of things, maybe even used them before. For me, it was a big step going in at all um, to sign up for the gym and really committing you know, financially to it, but also, you know, committing my time to it and, and wanting to make sure I could stick with it. So when I went in the first time after signing up, it was, okay, you know, what am I going to do while I'm here? You know, I, I had the friend who had gone with me, didn't show me a whole lot. So it was up to me to kind of follow along with that friend at first, you know, those first two or three times I went. Um, but I think the turning point for me was when that friend was no longer coming there with me and that left it up to me. So let's say like the fourth time I was in the gym, which is super early on, um, I thought, well, how am I going to do this without somebody who at least at that time knew a lot more than me about how to use machines and barbells and all those other types of things. So you get that intimidation and I certainly had that. Um, but what it was like for me was stepping into a whole different world that I never really thought about a whole lot during my life. And, you know, at that point it was, okay, I need to figure this out. I've learned four or five things that I could come in and do over and over, but I need to know more. I wanted to know more. Um, so I kind of just started, you know, Google, YouTube, you know, different ways to watch others, how they did things and that kind of stuff. And so that, got me a little more comfortable. Once I'd taken that initial step to go in there in the first place, I felt like I belonged more in the gym once I'd taken that step, you know, to, to go into the gym to begin with. And then learning more, you know, you just start being more comfortable with that atmosphere and how everything works and, and you know, getting more comfortable with the equipment and, and what you should be doing with it. So that's kind of how I started was just, you know, pushing myself to go there, doing the things I was used to, like the treadmill or the elliptical, those types of things that are fairly easy to get on and, and understand, and then wanting to expand it from there. So that's what I did. I know for me, I take it for granted a lot that I, I never had that uncomfortable um, point in my life, but I know that most people do at some point. The reason I didn't, my dad was a football coach and you know, since I was five, <clears throat> I was in the gym, you know, I was in the locker room and I was around this from the time I could walk. Um, so I, sometimes I take for granted that can be a little intimidating, but I want to encourage everybody out there, wherever you are, wherever you live, I've said this before, go into at least a couple gyms and see how they feel because they all feel different. And Almost every gym, every health club is going to have people there that can help you. They're such positive places and most people are going to be blown away. I don't care if you're 400 pounds overweight. If you're 400 pounds overweight, you're going to get a lot of attaboys or girls for being in there. You're going to get support. You're going to get encouragement that will blow your mind. And that's something that's really cool about the gym that people don't expect. So expect that. And then there's personal trainers and, and you know, almost every gym is going to at least take you through once and show you how to use the things that you want to do and find out what your goals are and so on. Almost every gym. And if a gym doesn't have that, you can ask the biggest, hugest person next to you that looks intimidating. Hey, excuse me. I'm new here. Would you show me how to do this? You'd be blown away. Is that that big, you know, Hulk guy will stop what he's doing after he finishes a set. Don't ask him during a set. But once he's done, he's going to say, yes, he's going to help you. Or he's going to point you in the right direction. So that's what's really cool about the gym. And uh, just go try it. You know, go into at least two, maybe three to see what the difference is, because a lot of them are different. And so, David, now, now you have a serious, um, healthy lifestyle. You're competing. You're down to what? Maybe 10, 12% body fat right now, preparing for a show right now. Is that right? Yeah, I'd say it's probably about 10 to 12%. It'll be great to see when we get that uh, body scanner in. But yeah, it's... Uh, um... Yeah, I'd say that's about right and getting ready for a show in August. Yeah, you know, I'm in my 60s. I'm hoping for under 18. I think that'd be pretty good. If I was going to guess, I'm going to say 15 or lower, which is pretty good for an old guy. <laughs> but um, tell us a little bit now. 
So you, you said you lost 40 pounds. And at first, you, it was just kind of by need. You know, you just started eating less. But after you lost that 40 pounds, how did you lose the other 25 pounds? What did you do? What did you learn about your diet? So the one thing, well, there's many things I, I learned, but one of the most important ones was that, you know, I really had not kept any kind of track, whether that was before I, I lost the weight or, you know, during that process. The one thing I learned during that process, of course, was, you know, I wasn't eating enough, but with all the research that I started doing um, after about that 40 pounds where I said, you know what, I want to, I want to keep going and, you know, job changes and things like that, like I need to keep going so that way I can maintain, you know, a more healthy, you know, weight, more healthy body composition, that type of stuff. What I decided to do was, okay, let's take a look at, you know, what I was eating then before all this started, you know, how much less was I eating, you know, during that initial weight loss period. And what I learned about it was, you know, you don't have to eat perfect all of the time, because that's one of the things, you know, I know that clients that I have and myself included before I really understood nutrition was, you know, we have to eat chicken and rice and broccoli every meal, you know, in order to get fit or to feel healthy. And, and that was kind of my thing is I, I didn't want to eat boring food. I didn't want to eat the same thing all the time. And that's what I thought maybe I'd have to do. But when I looked really more into it, it wasn't about, you know, eating plain, boring food all the time. It was, you know, now that you're at a stage where you're, you're going into a gym and you're doing exercise, even at the beginner level, you know, you need to eat, you know, the right amount of types of proteins and carbohydrates for energy, those types of things, but it doesn't have to be boring, but you do have to, and I see this a lot, you do have to eat enough. And of course, coming from where I was, that was one of the things that, you know, sure I was losing weight at that point. It wasn't a weight loss plan for me. Um, but if I wanted to continue to lose weight um, in a good way, I needed to figure that out because I was now doing this extra, you know, workouts at the gym, learning more and more. So what I figured out was, you know, I needed to really start watching and not on a scale at that time or anything like that, but really just looking at what am I putting into my body, you know, how much of it am I putting in there and just kind of stay away from uh, staying away from one of the things that's a um, kind of a, a, a source of a lot of fat and sugar for me, which would be sweets, which is for a lot of people, but for me, you know, ice cream, those types of things, love that stuff. Um, but it was more trying to control the urges to go eat that, you know, cause that could be a whole nother segment, but, um, you know, that's one of the things that I started doing was, okay, I'm going to start eating more, but I've got to watch what I'm eating more of. And I started, you know, cooking more things at home and I had three small kids. So it wasn't like I had all day to do it. Cause of course I had work and, and as a single dad at that time, it was, you know, how do we do this and still manage the family at the same time, which is a, a something that a lot of people go through, um, with families. And so what, what we did was just really got the kids eating the same types of foods that I did. We kind of ate the food together. Um, and so they also learned to eat healthy as well. And that was a new thing for me. So it wasn't something I was used to or, or knew a lot about, but you know, it was a lot of reading different magazines like fitness magazines or going online and researching like what's good for beginning weightlifters, you know, to, to continue to lose weight, but gain muscle. So there was a lot that I did to try to figure out the right way to go from there. You know, and I've guessed, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little tip. I mean, all you, all you out there listening in a second about how to start, uh, at least from my experience, but I just wanted to say, you've probably gained in your fitness career, you've lost 75 pounds, but you've, would you guess that, you, cause I would guess that you've probably gained 15 to 20 pounds of lean body mass of muscle. Would you say probably? Oh, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I would at least definitely 15 say that. to 20 pounds over the years. Now that's not going to happen overnight for sure. No, no that's <laughs> going to happen over years, especially if you're a natural lifter, that's not going to look, even if you're not a natural lifter, even if you're on gear, that's not going to happen overnight. It's not magic. It's a lot of work and the diet is everything. So mm -hmm. the first thing that I started to do because when I got out of my football career, I wanted to get leaner. Um, and I was lean just from the sheer 
number of calories that I was burning in a day. I had to eat 6,000 calories just to maintain my weight. But after that, I wanted to get leaner. And the first thing I did was just start eating clean. What I mean by clean is whole foods and making sure my protein was at 200 grams um, a day. So that, that was for me. And I just started eating whole foods. And so if you, the first step is just stop eating junk. You probably don't even have to start monitoring your calories. Make sure you get enough, enough protein. I do now. I know how much protein I eat every day. I know how many grams of carbs and how many calories I'm at every day. I chart it. And people might think that this is a lot of work, but it's really not because it becomes a passion. It becomes fun. I remember being in the gym, you know, doing bench press going, there is something wrong with me. I think this is fun, but it really is. And, and it, you challenge yourself and you get better and better. And you, it just, it really is fun and exciting. And then once you get some momentum, you don't want to lose your investment, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I started eating clean. What do I mean by clean? Get the junk out of your diet. What is junk? Processed foods. Mm -hmm. What is processed foods? Food in a package. Don't eat food in a package, in a box, or something that you have to tear the top off of. Start with that. Don't eat any of that. Eat fresh meats, vegetables, and fruits. If you do that, first of all, your calories are probably going to be cut more than in half without even trying, just from getting the junk out of your diet. And your appetite is going to regulate by eating healthy food. And you're going to be getting nutrients. There's no nutrients in processed foods. There's just seed oils, which are basically poison. So that's the first step. Now you're at a place where you're really serious. You're counting everything every day. You're very conscious about your weight training and your cardio because you're a competitor. What's different now in being that serious about, and again, these competitions, the competition is against yourself. Mm -hmm. Can I look better? Can I do better? Can I be better than I was in my last show? It's not really, of, of course, I mean, it's kind of competitive, you know, hey, I took first place or I took third or whatever. But the big thing is, and you don't even have to do a show to do this with yourself. You're competing against yourself and you're trying to be better at this point in time than you were at the last point in time. So what are you doing to perfect what you're doing? What's different now? So the difference now, I would say, is, um, I mean, even from last year, the, the last show I competed in was last May at the uh, Motherlode in Sparks and, um, you know, did great there pushed myself completely out of my comfort zone with a new division that I competed in and everything. So it was, it was a fantastic show best I've ever looked in my entire life at this, you know, at that point, um, at being almost 40 years old, you know, and, and going on that stage and just, you know, doing the best that I could for me. And so this time around, um, one of the things that I've done, um, took a little bit more time. I, I wanted to compete a few more times last year and all that kind of stuff. Cause once you do it, um, at least for me, you know, I want to compete and keep competing in different shows and stuff like that. What I did instead, along with my coach was we took some time off from competing and really said, okay, what's, what do we want to be the goal? And I said, well, I want to compete in 2024. Um, looked at doing maybe the mother load, but I said, you know what, let's do Tahoe show. That's where it all started for me anyway, in 2015. Um, so I wanted to kind of go back and, you know, have a whole different look, which I definitely do this time around. I mean, even better than before, even with 10, 12 ish percent body fat, I can tell the muscle mass has, has grown. The recomposition has happened. Um, and, and that's not from a whole year of eating, you know, perfect food every day and, and tracking everything every single day for the last year. It's been knowing what I am putting in my body and knowing, you know, yeah, there might be sometimes where there's, you know, uh, um, a junk food here or a junk food there. And when I say junk food, it's not an eight scoop Sunday. It's, you know, something a lot smaller than that. But the majority of the time you're eating those whole foods, which by the way, I wanted to kind of add there that, you know, a lot of people see that as more expensive than say buying a you know, TV dinner or, or whatever. It really isn't because especially if everybody's seen the prices out there, things are expensive. So 
a lot of the fresh things are a lot cheaper than you might imagine because they go farther and they're better overall for your health. So taking into consideration, you know, medical stuff that might happen down the road, whole nother show there, but it's super easy to, um, to think it's more expensive. But for me right now, where I'm at in my show preparation, I'm really going to be getting down to the nitty gritty here in about a week. It's going to be 14 weeks out. So what that means for me is going to be very specific on my nutrition plan um, down to the gram, actually. So, you know, from here on out, that's that's how specific it has to be, because in the end, at the end of the day, showtime comes, walk out onto that stage. It can make a huge difference, even 12 weeks out, because the way those muscles develop, the way that our recomposition is happening in order to do it just right. It's very specific and you have to really watch it closely. Whereas if someone's not going to go compete in a show and they just want to be healthy and that kind of thing, it's not going to be quite as sophisticated and as much work as they might think. But in a show right now, like for me, you know, come next week on Saturday at 14 weeks out, that's when my, you know, countdown begins, so to speak. So um, it gets very specific and you, you want to make sure you have the right levels of everything because at the end of the day, you're working out very intensely for the next 13 weeks till that peak week before the show. And you're, you're doing adjustments throughout because your body's responding in different ways to different amounts of nutrients and things like that. So you really have to watch it. And, you know, I'm glad to have a great coach that knows a lot about that too. Um, and so that's how we really go through all of this and, and, and monitor throughout the whole process. Yeah, it's very strict. And you, you said, I was going to ask, but you said you're 14 weeks out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is actually a fun process. Now, people are, I know what you're thinking out there. What's wrong with you, Steve? You think that's fun? Even if you're not going to compete, the point about a show is you have a specific date to make your body look a certain way on that date. You can do this without going on stage sure. and you can still challenge yourself to do this and have your own show, in, you know, in your own living room, whatever you want to do. Um, but let me ask you now, you're 14 weeks out and I know things are getting very specific right now. So uh, how many calories are you eating a day? So currently right now, 2,800 is where I'm at right now. So now when we get to that 14 week mark, um, we're going to be reevaluating for being 14 weeks out right now. The process was kind of getting leaned down some more, you know, I went on some vacations and some different things. So, you know, you don't always eat as good as you could when you're out and about traveling and those types of things. But right now we're to a point where, when we get to that 14 week mark this upcoming Saturday, what we want to try to do is, okay, reassess, where's my body composition at? What do I look like? And to a lot of people, that's a number on a scale. Number on a scale is, is one thing that you use to look at your overall health and your overall composition, especially for a show. I'm not looking to be a specific weight when I walk on stage. So the way that my coach and myself look at it, I mean, this will be my eighth show. So I've done this a bunch of times at this point is, you know, right now it's all about, okay, we're, we're leaning down a little bit more. And why do we do that? Well, because we want to be able to see what that body, you know, muscle growth has been. And of course, less body fat, you're able to see that. Um, and then we kind of work from there on how to lower that body fat, et cetera, through those 14 weeks to the point where you get down to 4.3%, like I was last time, but you don't start there and it doesn't happen overnight to your point of, of, you know, the different changes in the gym. It's the same with the show. Even if you have a professional coach and you're hundred percent on your meal plan, that's, it takes steps and it takes progress to get there. It's not going to happen overnight or in a month. It, it takes time to get to that goal. Okay. So typically what are you going to end up at? I know that your calories are going to come up right before <laughs> the show as you start carb loading and you're going to start loading up and letting those muscles fill out. But what is the lowest amount of calories that you think, and I know this is just a guess because you've got to evaluate as you go, but how low a, a amount of calories do you think you'll go? So for me, um, the last show, at least what we ended up kind of coming to was about 2,100. Well, I would say about 2,000 to 2,100. And that was, you know, on a 
every couple of days basis, kind of adding in or taking things out. And that was very close to the show. Um, you know, the last week, right before the show, yeah, there are points where you're carb loading and adding all this stuff in because you get, you get a lot smaller, slimmer in terms of lean, you know, uh, less body fat, that type of thing. You know, at least for me, we're not cutting out carbs at any point, but we cut them down a lot. And then of course you, you kind of force them in to kind of get those muscles nice and bigger. You get that bigger look. Um, but the lowest is about around 2000, I would say. Um, this time might be a little bit different, but again, it's a going to be a judgment depending on where I'm at. Right. And how tall are you? Uh, six foot two. And you weigh how much right now? Uh, right now, 205. Uh, as of my last show, when I walked out on stage, uh, 194. So about 11 pounds difference between now and then. Right. So there you go, everybody. That kind of gives you an idea of where David's at. Uh, if you guys have questions, if you're in the Carson City area, go by uh, to Fitness for 10 in Carson City and say hi to David. Um, you guys can look in the comment section and see all my affiliates. If you're looking for more information about testosterone, there's promo codes, um, Primal Kitchens in there, I think, and uh, in bigger medical is in there if you're looking for peptides so these are all things that i use otherwise they would not be in there we can check out those if you have questions uh send me a message or put it in the comment section and again if you're in the area uh, david the personal trainer at fitness for 10 in carson city thanks for being with us david yeah thanks for having me steve